Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here as we kick off the On the Move campaign for Colorado State University Pueblo. You don't have to stand, but there just are a few groups of people that we just want to thank for being here today. And so hold your applause, and we'll just uh, thank them when I'm done reading just a few uh, names here. We want to thank uh, our guests from the CSU system who are here, our elected officials who are here today, the President's University leadership team, and the Foundation Board of Directors. So those guests are in the room today. Would you just join me in thanking them as well? I'm Jennifer Mullen, and I'm the Chief of Staff here at the University, but I'm also a very proud alum of this University and a former faculty member, so this is a very exciting day for me too. And I'll be introducing our presenters today. Our first presenter I always love to introduce, the President of Colorado State University Pueblo, Dr. Leslie DeMar. Yeah, I probably did break it. <laughs> can take it out of my uh, salary. Well, good morning, everyone. It's just a thrill to see you all here today. I cannot believe what has happened in um, a year and a half since I first arrived. And again, all of the things that do happen here are due to the wonderful community and to those who are alums and who have supported CSU Pueblo for its entire history. In these past 80 years, you've just seen your institution grow more and more. And I, I do want to say on behalf of the students, faculty, and staff of CSU Pueblo, uh, thank you for being here today as we kick off a multi-million dollar capital campaign that will benefit our university community and most importantly, our CSU Pueblo students. And I do want you to know that those scholarship dollars that go to our students will help educate them, allow them to remain in school, and graduate and become active participants in our community and society. So this campaign is extremely important to them. I particularly want to thank Foundation Chairman Dan DeRose Foundation President and CEO Todd Kelly and his staff, the Foundation Board, and the Capital Campaign Committee for all their hard work so far, and I know yet to come. And again, it's just so thrilling to see individuals like these who work so hard because they know that having a university in their community is so important for economic development and for keeping a close-knit community. So we can't thank them enough for that. I want to especially thank those who have already contributed to the campaign. I have to tell you, um, at my other institution, I didn't have to spend, unfortunately, an hour a day signing thank you letters to those very generous donors um, that we have here. And your commitment to CSU Pueblo is powerful. And I want you to know that it reaches beyond the community of Pueblo. Everywhere I go in the state of Colorado, I always hear kudos for what this community does for its community and its university. We're here today because we believe in CSU Pueblo, its historical past, its vibrant presence, and its promise for the future. And we all do believe we have a bright future. And we recognize the 80th anniversary of CSU Pueblo this year. We say hello to our 40,000 alums that remind us that higher education can really, truly change our lives. And no matter what the media may tell us today or the naysayers may say, it is of the most import that everyone have the opportunity to receive a degree from a higher education institution. Your support of this capital campaign 
will help ensure that we give our students nothing less than each of us was given. The transformational experience of higher education and the remarkable accomplishment of a college degree. Thank you for being here today and for your steadfast support of Colorado State University Pueblo. I am sincerely grateful. Our next presenter is an alum of this university, a former amazing athlete, a former faculty member, a former athletic director, a longtime supporter of the university, Foundation Chairman Dan DeRose. Thanks, Jen. It's great seeing everybody here today. You all look so dapper. Thanks for coming out. Um, Dr. Damare briefly uh, identified or introduced the foundation board, but I would like the members of the foundation board to stand for a minute, if you would, and we could give them a round of applause. It's a uh, all volunteer group, and they work very, very hard. And uh, we thought long and hard before we bit off this challenge that we're about to undertake, but the board unanimously stepped up and said, let's do it. So we're excited uh, to take on this task. I'd also like to real quickly have the foundation staff, who's going to do a lot of the work, um, stand up and be recognized. If the foundation staff would do, do that, please. Most of them are in the back. Thank you. Well, the announcement that you've seen in the paper, we've tried to keep it a secret. I think most of you probably know what's going on, but this is the official announcement. Uh, we are embarking on a three-year, $25 million campaign. The University Foundation started in 1954, and we have assets of about $26 million. So what took 60 years to build, we're going to try to double in three years. So in order for us to do that, we're going to need help and support from the entire community. You know, all the foundations and individual donors and those that uh, will step forward and help us in this cause. Our campaign breaks down into three simple areas. Okay, we have very focused goals that we want to accomplish. The largest area is that of scholarships. Fifteen million dollars of the campaign will go to scholarships for our students. We want to be able to recruit the best and brightest students in Southern Colorado and throughout the state of Colorado. And when we get that unique chance to bring an out-of-state student or even a foreign student here to study, we're going to take advantage of that as well. And, and that's what this focus is for, is so that we can be competitive and we can go after the top students and we can help those students that are here, that are working hard, stay here. You know, try to retain them on campus. It's a very important thing for us to keep our enrollment strong and for us to continue to grow. So that's our major focus, is our scholarship dollars for our young men and women to help them attain their degree and become successful and become alumni and become, most importantly, donors, right? So that's, that's what uh, we're focusing on there. Our second phase, our second stage, second part of our campaign is we're gonna contribute $5 million to the remodeling and total, oh, um, we're gonna make over this whole building, okay? The Joseph M. Oceato University Center has uh, been here since I was a student, quite frankly, and it hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, and the goal is to double this building in size and double all the amenities that are here within this building. You know, with the new dorms, and with all the life that we have on campus and, and the fact that we have a bunch of students that live here now, uh, we're really missing this key piece, um, a vibrant, up-to-speed, up-to-date student center. And that's what this is going to accomplish for us. The whole project is $35 million. The Board of Governors approved a $26 million bond. The students themselves had taxed themselves four or five years ago, and there's a reserve of $4 million. That takes us to 30. And then the foundation is going to add $5 million on top of that. And we have some special guests here today. And uh, I know Joyce is caught in traffic, so we'll introduce her when she comes. But Mike, if you would join me on stage now. Mike Oshiato 
and Joyce Oceato of the Oceato family, uh, we, we went and met with Mike and talked to him. And as you know, their name is on the building now. And we said what we're going to do. And we asked them very boldly for a million dollars to uh, keep the Joseph M. Oceato name on the student center. And like they've always done, they said yes. And they stepped up and uh, donated that. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. That was all for you, Joyce. Good timing. That's all right. Did you get a ticket? Not quite. Okay, good. I'm going to have uh, the Oshado say a few words. Well, thank you very much, Dan. Back in 1985, when my mother approached us with the idea of uh, naming this student center the Joseph M. Oshado Center, the first thing she said, your dad will be very proud to be part of the student activity and to see young students grow. Because my dad always had a dream. His first dream was to graduate Central, which he did, and then play football for uh, UCLA. But being in a family business and coming from a family of nine children, he was not able to go to college. But he always had a dream. And his dream, of course, started in 1936 when he brought Pepsi into Pueblo and developed a very large, successful business. But throughout the years, he started many different programs for youth. And one of the programs he started here at the university was the Pepsi Cola GI Forum Hispanic Scholarship Fund, which many students took advantage and some of them went on to get their medical degree. So my sister and I are just very thankful and grateful for the opportunity to step forward, help the university and be a part of the university and to help these students who have dreams meet their reality. Because if you dream, it'll come true. Just put your mind to it. That's all he told us. Thank you very much. Would you like to say something, Joyce? Thank you very much for this opportunity. The construction of this project will start soon, so that's exciting. All the funding is in place. The foundation funding is going to be in place after today, right? Because we're going to have people step up. Our third stage or our piece of our campaign is $5 million for athletics. I think a lot of you in this room, room know the impact that athletics can have on this campus. Not only are student athletes some of our best students, higher graduation rate, higher retention rate, higher GPA than the average student body, uh, they also represent us not only in Pueblo but when they compete throughout the country. And it's a very important part of this university. And so we're going to contribute $5 million to the continued success of athletics. Specifically, that money is going to go for two things. First, we're going to add six new sports. And I know Servi thinks this was his idea, but we've had this in the making for a long time. <laughs> we're going to add uh, men and women's lacrosse. Joe's going to talk about this in detail. Uh, men's cross country, men's indoor track, men's outdoor track, women's swimming and diving. So with that, there's a need for a facility. And that facility is going to be right down by the Thunder Bowl. It's going to look a lot like the Thunder Bowl. Nick has put it up here for you. We're going to build a new soccer lacrosse stadium. It'll be the nicest soccer lacrosse stadium in the state of Colorado and certainly in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. It will house the locker rooms, the coaching offices, all the facilities that are needed to have a uh, nationwide, are a co very competitive in the nation program. And we're excited about that. So that's part of that campaign. And uh, that's what's going on with the whole campaign. So it's a $25 million campaign, three years. And we're going to need everyone's help. Todd's going to talk a little bit about that. But I would encourage you, you know, myself and, and my family, uh, when we look at things to give to, and there's a lot of opportunities out there, um, this, is the, this is the place that we choose because of its impact in Pueblo. You know, without this university, uh, we would be a much different community. And this university is very, very important to our future 
and to our success as Puebloans. And so I think we all need to step up and we all need to write a check and we all need to get involved and support this campaign. Thank you very much. Great. And with that, this is the best news. We'll go to the, what we've raised to date. We started the silent phase May 1st. And since May 1st, we've raised $5,449,282, which is, uh, <laughs> so we're off to a good start. It's wonderful to see students here today. We want to welcome you. You know, students are the heart of this university, and they're certainly the reason for this campaign. And so I'm honored to introduce to you the leader of our student body, the president of our Associated Students Government, Vanessa Emerson. There are very few gifts that change people's lives. And a scholarship to a student at CSU Pueblo has to be one of them. I myself am a product of CSU Pueblo scholarships. And I can tell you wholeheartedly that if I did not receive a scholarship, I would not, I could not be here today. That comes from the support of the university, the support of the individuals beside me, and the support of each and every faculty member that said, you can do this, and this is how I'm gonna make that possible. With that also being said, I can tell you how excited our students at CSU Pueblo are with the remodel of the building that is to come. And every day we are in our classrooms and we have that engraved in our mind that it may not be this year, but you're going to see those things happen on our campus. It hits you here. With that also being said, I can tell you that the students that I sit next to every day in the classrooms, it is a joy and a pleasure to know that they are at, they're at an excellent level, not because they're just here, but because when they went home and they received their letter from their parents saying, you are here at CSU Pueblo, the, to be able to tell their parents that I have a scholarship and they are going to support me in being here at CSU Pueblo is phenomenal. So with that being said as well, I do want to tell you how important it is that you support us in this endeavor and that when we are able to go back to our students and tell them what we got from this conference, the engagement that we had from this community, the support that we had from the faculty and staff and each and every one of you in this room, that it was phenomenal. Thank you. Vanessa is a great example of living a lifestyle that many of our students at CSU Pueblo live because she is not only the student body president and a full-time student in the business school, not MassCom, but we don't hold it against her, but, um, <laughs> oh, you're a minor in MassCom, aren't you? That's right, okay. Um, she also works probably 40 hours a week uh, in a leadership supervisory role at a local business. So, uh, and, and being student body president, you're involved in so many meetings and service and committees um, that we keep her running and, and she's just an amazing young woman and we're really proud that she's our, our student body president. Give her another hand. <laughs> well, Vanessa talked about how powerful the scholarship was in her life and it's always wonderful when we can hear from our students about the power that scholarships gave for them. Next, to share his thoughts on the economic impact and power of the renovation of our beloved Oceano University Center, Chairman, CEO, President, all things great, of the Greater Pueblo Chamber of Commerce, Rod Slyhoff. Well, uh, thank you, Jen. I'm <laughs> honored with that introduction, but boy, what a day! I mean, you know, you guys don't know how lucky you are. I know how lucky I am because I get to live in one of the best communities in southern Colorado, in all of Colorado, in a, I think in the country, and you do too. And we're here today to 
announced this great endeavor. Um, I was never really good at math, but raised a fifth of the goal in three months. I don't know why it's going to take three years. <laughs> I mean, I think they made a mistake there, but that's okay. Um, but you know, Pueblo, Colorado has come a long way over the last several years. And it's been on the move, just like this campaign is going to make the university be on the move. And what's, what's helped us to be on the move is high educated students that can work in our places of business. And there's a lot of community leaders out here, elected officials, and it's the students that come out of CSU Pueblo that have helped us move forward. A student that leaves this campus with a degree earns about $18,000 more a year than, a than somebody that just graduated from high school. This university puts about $130 million in economic impact every year in Pueblo County. They, because of the efforts of the university, there are about 1,400 jobs associated with the university, faculty and the spin-off jobs that happen. This university has had significant impact on our community over the years, and with an additional $25 million, just think what it's going to do for our community. Now, the Oceato Center, a beautiful facility. Thank you, Mike and Joyce. We really appreciate all you did back in the 80s and now stepping up again. This, this facility has not only been beneficial to the students and the faculty here, but over the course of the years, we've used this facility for community functions as well. The renovation is going to allow us to have one more crown jewel in our offering that we can offer to outside groups and organizations that want to come here for corporate meetings and conventions and have top-notch business sessions. We can do it here at the university in this newly re renovated building. So it's great to have an additional piece that we can offer when we're out there marketing Pueblo, and this is going to be tremendous when it's done. We love to be up here and associate with the students and the faculty. We're all one family. We're all Pueblo. And uh, I got to tell you, when Dan DeRose says to write a check, I write a check. <laughs> That's why, you know, some of you are saying, why Sly Hoff up on a stage? He doesn't seem to be too bright of a guy. But when Dan DeRose says, be up on a stage, you're up on a stage. So um, anyway, pick up some information as you leave and support this great effort and help us make CSU Pueblo even a better institution than it already is. Thank you. Now it's my honor to introduce to you the man who holds the most basketball wins in the history of this university, Athletic Director Joe Folda. Thanks, Jen, and quite, I'm sure, the most losses also. <laughs> I just uh, want to mention something about uh, watching the video here. This is the first time I had seen it. Uh, you know, sometimes I personally, even though I've been here for 25 years and, and love this university and community, I sometimes catch myself taking it for granted on just what kind of students we have here at the university, the kids that have come through the university, and the faculty and staff, just what, uh, what all they do for the university and our kids, and what types of programs are up here that are not only for the students, but for the community and et cetera. Uh, and I think maybe a lot of us do that. We probably wonder what the heck's going on up up the hill and et cetera and et cetera. But uh, I, this uh, video hit home to me. And I, I just would like to, in fact, uh, have everybody give a round of applause. In this case, there's so many people, I understand that. But I, I'd like to give a round of applause to our professors and faculty for what they do.
want to give a special thanks, obviously, to President DeMar and Todd Kelly, the CEO of the foundation, and in particular, uh, Dan DeRose, and, uh, and I always got to include his family, but uh, for just taking on this challenge, because this is a heck of a challenge in my mind, even though we're already uh, one-fifth the way there, um, just to do this, take this on, and hey, it's just like an athletic event. We, we're going to the game, and, and uh, we're hoping for the best. We're hoping to get a big victory, but who knows? You could get your tail beat, too. That's the way it is. But this is a heck of a challenge, and I appreciate them taking the, the lead on this. So, um, I, When Dan was up here, he mentioned I was going to give the details on the sports expansion, the six sports, uh, men's, women's lacrosse, uh, men's track and cross country, and the swimming and diving. And I was going to give you the details. Well, I think he already gave you the details of what we're doing. Because I don't have the names of the players yet, and, and our coaches aren't in place yet, other than we do have our men's track coach already, Matt Morris. And I was going to have him here today to introduce, introduce you to him, but uh, he, he could not make it, I, I guarantee you. Otherwise, he would have been here. But there, as a result of the, the six new sports, we will bring in... Uh, at least 130 new student athletes to the university and also many many of their friends that will accompany them maybe girlfriends relatives maybe down the road big brothers and sisters and etc so not only will this in, will be able to enhance the athletic program go up to 22 sports and actually lacrosse is one of the fastest growing sports in America right now especially out this way uh, but also we're going to be able to hopefully assist and enhance the university's enrollment, which obviously we need to keep building uh, as we continue to grow. So this obviously is another exciting day in the university's history. And, and what I think is within the next three years, I believe we'll take, and it's never final, but I'm going to say that final uh, step in what I always like to say of this university becoming the jewel of the South uh, in the community of Pueblo. Super proud of it, proud of our community, and obviously the university. So thank you so much, and uh, as always, go Pack. Thank you. Our final presenter is also an alum of our university and the former development director for our athletic department. He's also an all-around nice guy. Please welcome foundation president and CEO, Todd T.K. Kelly. Nick Potter, the DJ back there. Thanks, Nick. Hey, thank you so much for coming out today. I, I greatly appreciate you guys coming out. You know, when you plan these events and you don't call for RSVPs, you don't know who's going to show up. And about uh, 10 to 11, Dan came up to me and said, hey, TK, <laughs> we're hurting. <laughs> see, there was, see, Rod was here. Uh, I think Chris was here and the staff. And so we guys, I was a little worried there. But you guys uh, picked me up and... Uh, came up. It's kind of funny seeing people in the background, the football coaches and players, it's kind of like back in college. They all sat in the back. They didn't want to be engaged, so that doesn't change. But uh, from our beginnings as a junior college 80 years ago, to a transition to a four-year college, uh, to our beautiful campus now, spending 600 acres, this university has constantly been on the move. Today we are here to help you keep us on the move. This goal we've set, very aggressive, very bold, but it's a goal I'm confident that we, as public community members, CSU Pueblo graduates, so the kind of boosters that we can attain. This campaign is a lot like a successful sports team. Teams are, made, are comprised of individuals from various economic backgrounds, cultures, uh, society, but they come together uh, in one unit, one cohesive unit for one common goal for a national championship, 
For us, we're coming together with one goal, $25 million. Today, we are asking for your help in keeping this university uh, going forward by making a pledge. We've received some generous gifts already, and we thank you guys for your support. Um, for us to reach our goal, and hopefully surpass our goal, we need each and every one of you to help us out. We are asking you to give what you can, but no gift is too small, and know this, that every gift impacts this university and impacts our students. Collectively, as a team, we can uh, change the lives of our students who will be our future business and civic leaders. To join our team today, all you need to do, and at this time I'd like to call up the cheerleaders uh, to come forward and pass out the forms. Let's thank the, the CSU Public Cheerleaders for coming out today volunteering. We also have Wolfie, the mascot, and I saw Tundra here a little bit ago. Tundra's around. Hey, let us, let's hear Tundra howl real quick, Carol. All right, there you go. Now, I've tried to howl. That, my howl doesn't sound quite as good as that. But, uh, um, and again, uh, uh, those forms give you the, the uh, background on our campaign, the goals, uh, how to contribute. Um, a couple things, the OUC project and the soccer field project, they're part of the Enterprise Zone. So individuals that donate to those projects not only get the tax deduction for the original donation, but you also get a 25% tax credit. So for uh, those who are uh, needing a tax credit, uh, that is available to you. So in closing, I just want to say thank you again for coming out today. Um, I invite you to stick around, have some cookies and refreshments. Thanks again for coming. And again, every dollar counts. Go pack. Have a good day.